intro, but whatever. Too long. Whatever. I, we were talking on, off. We were talking off mic, and I got distracted. <laughs> Anyways, well, you got to hear a little longer the sweet, sweet sounds of Millennial Frog off of one of his latest albums, the gentleman known as Millennial Frog. I believe that song was Requiem W. 9-11, something George W. Bush, I think. <laughs> so I felt it was appropriate as a political podcast theme song. ISIS, Holocaust, yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, my name's Josh. I'm here today with Adam. This is No Party Preference. And if you want to hear all of our other podcasts, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com, Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine, Twitter slash X at GameRageMag, all Gas No Trash Official on Instagram if you want to follow Adam and find out about all of his musical uh, hate and opinions. And you can also listen to the podcast, which is most conveniently located on the GameRageMagazine.com website or wherever podcasts are available, All Gas No Trash. Um, also, just want to make sure that we had all of our social medias and everything out there, so that way, uh, if you got a problem or you got some shit to say, you can come at us in the fucking comments because this episode is probably going to piss people off. I don't know which camp we're going to piss off. Maybe both camps. I don't fucking know. But either way, someone's getting pissed off. So, <clears throat> um, hit me. So this episode is called, you know, I don't know. It's, 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 either, <laughs> it's either old Benji goes to Washington or something to that effect. And, and it's go- this, this episode is going to be about uh, the prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, coming to the United States and Natty Ice. That's yeah. actually that's how you shit, man. He should get fucking Net, bling like that. Like he should have some Netty, bling. Yeah. Netty Ice. That's actually not a bad idea, man. I should, what, fuck. Why doesn't why don't the why don't the Israelis hire us to do their PR? Because clearly they're fucking up. I mean, like, um, but he, you know, he came here um, to basically speak with Congress or give a give a presentation or I don't know what the fuck you call it. A, I guess it'd be just like a speech. And then he came to talk with Biden, Kamala, Harris, and I think he's, I don't know if he for sure is talking to Trump or if some of his people are talking to Trump because I see what you're, I see what they're doing here. Yeah, go ahead. Is it, isn't that what ends up happening when they have the two candidates uh, for the election? They end up filling in both of them as if they were president. Not necessarily, because it's generally seen as extremely disrespectful to go to the one who's not the incumbent to speak of future business. Mm. Generally, you always wait until the election is over. But I guess I meant more specifically within internal organizations or departments of the U.S. government that they both get filled in on for Things, but I I don't know about like international international affairs for the yeah. So basically, like the candidates right now, like if you're if you're the not the incumbent and you're just the candidate, right? So I guess um, in 08 when it was Obama and what fucking John McCain, yes, uh, neither of them were the incumbent, so neither of them were getting briefings like the president gets. Neither of them were getting any information. They weren't having like high level meetings with foreign dignitaries because neither of them are the guy. And so the only one who can, the only guy who can do those is the actual current sitting president. Mm -hmm. So it is seen to me as disrespectful. It's like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Orban from uh, Hungary, the Hungarian prime minister. He came to the U S he didn't speak with Biden, he spoke. He only had a meeting with Trump about this whole Russia Ukraine thing, and to me, that was extremely fucking disrespectful and very disrespectful of our system that we have. Because you can talk to, I mean, I guess you can talk to Trump, but like the guy who's going to make the decision for something now is going to be the guy who's the current president. So you trying to make plans with the person who is going against him is like, that just undermines the whole thing. That's just, that's just chaotic. That's like fucked up. I would, I'd be like, yeah, all right, fuck that guy. Like, uh, you know, hey, if you fuck around and uh, Trump loses, guess what, bitch? Uh, Hungary is getting fucked for the next four years. That's all I got to say. <laughs> like, if I was the president. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, so, when... Netanyahu comes here and he wants to speak 
to Congress and address them. It's, you know, he's a foreign dignitary. Uh, he's an ally, quote unquote, dignitary. A so one-sided ally. You know, extremely. And he basically fucking kind of dressed down Congress and they applauded him the whole, they gave him standing ovations for it. And this is where, this is where we're going to be crossing the line into people. If your defense for what I'm saying is that I'm anti-Semitic, then you're a fucking idiot. You're just a fucking idiot and you don't have a counter argument for me saying why we shouldn't be militarily and monetarily supporting Israel in a potential war with Iran. I think that they made their bed, they can lie in it. Yeah. That's what I think. I also think that as well. I th- but, but also, I'm pro-military industrial complex. So I mean, whatever, yeah. whatever serves the best interest for the United States in terms of security, shit, if that, that means supporting Israel for a time, shit, it could be Palestine at one point, but it's whatever, sure. serve, it's whatever is in service of the U.S. Right, but right now... It's not none of that is is serving us at all. And and the reason for that is because the Middle East is a non-factor when it comes to military action against the United States. The only thing that they maybe had on us for a while was oil production. But we actually if we ramped up our full oil production, we could we easily make more more barrels per day for them. And then we don't even have to sell it to anybody. We could just use it ourselves and have oil or gasoline be 10 cents a fucking gallon if we were to do that, right? So the Middle East doesn't have that card anymore to, to be saying, oh, well, we're going to cut you off from oil. I don't, I think we could just, I think we should just let the Middle East implode on itself. I think that's what's the best interest for us. And, and what's fucked is all these people saying these, the, all the Trump supporters are highlighting how he is going back to America first, right? He's going back to America first and he's going back to this whole, isolationist sort of uh, foreign policy where we are just going to worry about ourselves and not, and whatever with one exception. And that exception is Israel. Trump goes on plenty of speeches talking about how he is going to wants to support Israel. They're our best ally. They're our best friend. We love them. We're going to do whatever we can to help them. When I become president again, blah, blah, blah. So you can't have both things. It's, it's, it's that 1984 doublespeak. It's oxymoronical. You can't tell me you're going to be America first, but then also give Israel everything they need and also basically help them invade Iran, which uh, I forget the guy's fucking name. I got to find it, but he's like one of the deputy under secretaries or under prime minister guys in Israel. And he said that they are very much hoping Trump wins the election because they, they, they basically, the Israelis have said that Trump will assist with an invasion of Iran, which is ultimately what Israel wants on the geopolitical stage, right? That's what they want. And, uh, but to get back to the main topic of the thing, and I'm not, again, I, I'm not anti-Jew. I don't. I don't hate all Jews. I'm. An, I'm not even really anti-Israeli. I'm just anti-Israeli government. Like I said, I think their government is shit. I think that they're fucking hot garbage. I think that they're a bunch of essential warmongers and are essentially starting. They're starting a fight in the Middle East that we are going to need to finish, and we're going to need to spend our blood and our lives and to finish that fight. And resources. And resources. Correct. And I don't think we should be doing that. I don't think we should do it in the Ukraine. I don't think we should do it there. To be quite honest, I don't think we should be doing it in Taiwan. I think we should go back to a true pull all our shit back. We need to stop being the world police and we need to focus on our problems here. Right. Um, But that's maybe potentially another episode to do. But uh, in regard to. The speech, I have the transcript in front of me of, of his speech that he gave, and it was. Yesterday, Wednesday. Paraphrasing or are you going to read it word for word? No, I'm going to read parts of it word for word. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it was kind of long. Okay. Um, but, God damn it. That was the wrong speech. <laughs> I was like, why is he saying Obama? Like, oh, here it is. This is from, God damn it. <laughs> wrong. No, this is from the, the, the source is the Jewish News Syndicate. So, <laughs> okay. all right, so I'll say this. Anyone who is is going to say I'm anti-Jew, I'm reading it from your own fucking publication. So, 
I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear shit. Because if they lie on this, that's on them. All right. That's your guys' own source. So um, he goes on to, he basically, he, he gives this, this speech. He talks about how he thanks us for giving him the profound honor of addressing the great, this great citadel of democracy. This is what somebody refers to America as, the great citadel of democracy, right? Already ball washing us just from the beginning. Copulating. Yeah. Um, he's, he goes on to say, we meet today at a crossroads of history. Our world is in upheaval. In the Middle East, Iran's axis of terror confronts America, Israel, and our Arab friends. This is not a clash of civilizations. It's a clash between barbarism and civilization. It's a clash between those who glorify death and those who sanctify life. For the forces of civilization to triumph, America and Israel must stand together. Because when we stand together, something very simple happens. We win, they lose. Now, that's not because of Israel. This is me talking now. That's because of us. That's because of America. Israel wins when we team up because we're the guy fucking everybody's shit up. Notice that he says it has to be in conjunction with the U.S. Yeah, because they won't survive. Israel cannot. They do not have the military capability to wage a full-scale war against all the other assholes that hate them in the Middle East. It is a, it is not possible. Anyone who fucking tells me otherwise is a lie. The only thing that equalizes the playing field for them is they have nuclear weapons. However, Iran probably does now too. So equalizations are starting to become closer and closer. Like the equalizers are starting to not matter really anymore or the the advantages that Israel had because they can always just drop a nuke. That's what everybody in the Middle East is like, okay, all right guys, we'll fuck off and we won't won't find it. We don't want to find out because Israel will do it. They will drop nukes. So... He goes on later. Now, this is this part really kind of pissed me off, but he goes on to say, ladies and gentlemen, like December 7th, 1941 and September 11th, 2001, October 7th is a day that will forever live in infamy. And he talks about how 3,000 Hamas terrorists stormed into Israel. They butchered 1,200 people from 41 countries, including 39 Americans. Proportionately, compared to our population size, that's like 20 9-11s in one day. In one day. (laughs) How fucking... (laughs) What do you mean? You're comparing fucking terrorists on literal foot, on cars, and on fucking hang gliders flying in to your country, you're considering that on the same level as Pearl fucking Harbor, the catalyst event that threw us into World War II, to 9-11, which was the catalyst event that put us in the Middle East for 20 fucking years. The only comparison that I would say that is, I don't know if it's meant, if it's intentional or unintentional, but the only comparison that you could justify is that October 7th will be the thing that gets the United States involved in starting what will be known as World War III. That's basically the comparison, is what, that's how I would take it. And he he goes on to essentially talk about how all these people have been taken hostage. This is going to be paraphrasing because, like I said, the speech was kind of long. He's talking about paraphrasing. He's talking about, or not paraphrasing, I'm talking about paraphrasing. He's talking about all the hostages. This whole speech was basically about October 7th. And he says, President Biden and I have known each other for over 40 years. I want to thank him for a half a century of friendship with Israel and for being, as he says, a proud Zionist. A proud Zionist. Wait, he's speaking on Biden's behalf to say that? Yes, and he says, actually, he says a proud Irish-American Zionist. Oof, that, that, is, that is some big balls to say, uh, speaking on somebody else's behalf to say they're something that they probably don't actually believe themselves. Right, and as we've learned the difference between 
Judaism and Zionism are not the same thing. Zionism is the pushing forward of a Jewish run state, not necessarily, it's not Judaism itself. It's, it's a state run by Judaism. That's what Zionism is. You can very much be an anti-Zionist and not be anti-Semitic. It's, it's very possible. People who tell you otherwise are wrong. Now, yes, I, I can concede. Are some people who are anti-Zionist anti-Semitic? Of course. But it's the th- same thing that goes with the pedophile thing. Not all people with mustaches are pedophiles, but all pedophiles have mustaches, right? It's one of those type of deals, okay? So this is what we have. To say that a sitting president is pro-Zionism, the spreading of a, of a, of a sanctioned state with a state-sponsored religion, that is essentially the opposite of our American way. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the exact fucking opposite. And the balls, like you said, of him to say that, I, I mean, granted, maybe because he knows Biden's not running anymore because this speech came after he had bowed out. Maybe he can say this, but he is... He's going on to describe people who have been killed in this conflict between Gaza. He goes on to describe people who have been captured. And there was a, I'm looking for the line in here. Okay. He goes on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this part line for line. He says, Dear, or my friends, defeating our brutal enemies requires both courage and clarity. Clarity begins by knowing the difference between good and evil. Yet incredibly many anti-Israel protesters, many choose to stand with evil. They stand (laughs) with Hamas. They stand with rapists and murderers. They stand with people who came into the kibbutzim, into a home, the parents hid, the children, the two babies in the attic in a secret attic. They murdered the family, the parents. They found the secret latch on the hidden attic and then they murdered the babies. These protesters stand with them. They should be ashamed of of themselves. They refuse to make the simple distinction between those who target terrorists and those who target civilians between the democratic state of Israel and the terrorist thugs of Hamas. We recently learned from the U.S. Director of National Intelligence that Iran is funding and promoting anti-Israel protests in America. They want to disrupt America. So these protesters burned American flags even on the 4th of July. And I wish to salute the fraternity brothers at the University of North Carolina who protected the American flag, protected the American flag against these anti-Israel protesters. For all we know, Iran is funding the anti-Israel protests that are going on right now outside this building. Not that many, but they're there and throughout the city. Well, I have a message for these protesters. When the tyrants of Tehran, who hang gays from cranes and murder women for not covering their hair, are praising, promoting, and funding you, you have officially become Iran's useful idiots. It's amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Some of these protesters hold up signs proclaiming gays for Gaza. They might as well hold up signs saying chickens for KFC. Which is a funny line. I gotta give them that. That is funny. That's hilarious. Um... These protesters chant from the river to the sea, but many don't have a clue what river and what sea they're talking about. They not only get an F in geography, they get an F in history. They call Israel a colonial estate. Don't they know that the land of Israel is where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob prayed, where Isaiah and Jeremiah preached, and where David and Solomon ruled? For nearly 4,000 years, the land of Israel has been the homeland of the Jewish people. It's always been our home. It will always be our home. But that's not true. He, he said all that? He said this. He Dude, said that all is, this. that is a lot of assumptions to say that Iran is, is funding all these anti-Israel protests. See, and that's the difference is here in America, we have this thing called freedom of speech. Now, sure, Israel is okay with gays. They're okay with, you know, some level of free speech as long as it's not against them. Anything that's against them, you are not allowed to say in Israel. You're not allowed to do these kind of things in Israel. You couldn't have anti-Israel protests in Israel. They would just fucking kill you. Like, that's kind of how they operate. Um, 
And I don't. I think the part that bothers me the most is uh, him saying that he knows the difference between good and evil better than anybody. Sure. And that Palestinians are supporting terrorists, therefore they're evil. Shit, man. Maybe if you stopped attacking them, they would, they wouldn't have a reason to hate you. So it's I mean, like maybe. And also think about it this way: Israel's military doctrine is not the same as the United States military doctrine. And just for a brief explanation, if you want to maybe hear more, you can go maybe listen to the Central Unintelligence podcast where we talk about all things geopolitical and global politics. But this is specifically related to America. But just to kind of give context. Our policy in terms of military doctrine is, hey, if there's a terrorist that's in, let's say, a building, well, we're going to go send in, like with the, uh, let's call the uh, Osama bin Laden assassination or killing. Let's call, let's use that as an example. We knew the building he was in. We knew who was there. We knew it was his family members. There was a couple, like, like I said, innocent civilians being his family members that weren't him. So what do we do? We sent in basically SEAL Team 6 to go in and do a precision killing of him and anyone else that was there that resisted them. We didn't just predator drone the fucking thing and take out the whole building and maybe half of a neighborhood block. We didn't do that. That's not how we operate. Now, does that happen? Yes, accidents happen. It's war. Horrible things happen. But generally, our doctrine is not to just kill innocent civilians. Israel is the opposite. Their documented military doctrine is, hey, there's one guy in that hospital right there that we need to kill. Cool, level the building. That's that is, happened. That, is, that has happened multiple times. That's their military doctrine. Co- collateral damage. They don't care because their military, and, and I will say this, their military objective is completed. It is effective as a military strategy. But you cannot tell me that you know the difference between good and evil because there is a difference and you don't know it if you're doing that. If you're killing people who had nothing to do with this, and I will get to this later when I get to it in the speech because there's something that he says that is very, very fucking, it is the most 1984-esque thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. This, that doublespeak, that Orwellian doublespeak. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to add to uh, whatever he was saying about the University of North Carolina flag burning. Mm -hmm. Bro, like, nobody's asking you to interject in our fucking own affairs. And you think you know so much more about all the shit that happens in the U.S. making assumptions that Iran is is spreading propaganda about anti-Israeli protests and all this shit. It's 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 so bad, dude. Like it's it's pure asinine, and uh, the the fact that he had the balls to go to Congress and have this speech and um and say that we're we're fucking stupid and we don't know any better and we need we need the pairing and the relationship of the U.S. and Israel in order for both to prosper. No, no, we don't. Yeah, correct. No, we don't. We don't. We don't need you. You need us, though. And and this is and I've said this before, but if you want us to keep giving you shit, keep your fucking nose out of our business. Yeah, know your role, dude. Don't fucking criticize us and then say that we're this great tag team, but then shit on us for having freedom of speech and, and things you don't like to hear. Because I'm sorry, if you want to be friends with us, yeah, you're going to have to eat a shit sandwich or two a couple of times. That's how it goes here in America. People can say and do what they want. And so he goes on to talk about the International Criminal Court, which they basically have issued all these arrest warrants war against crimes. them and shit for war crimes. Yeah. And, I mean, let's be honest, rightfully so. Rightfully fucking it's so. It's true, dude. The, the, okay, and also, I just want to add one more thing. Yeah. He's making these comparisons to 9-11 and all this shit. I don't know what the casualties were for the number of people that died on October 7th. It's, let's say it's 1,200. It was like 1,200. 12, yeah, it was around 1,200. All right, dude. But when you, I know it's not directly related to Iran itself, but when it comes to Palestinians, man, you displaced a whole bunch of people and a lot of people fucking died. 
that is not proportional. That is not uh, a, a an equitable or equal response to to uh, the violence that you received on your end, and so much so that the inner what is it the international. International Criminal Court. Criminal Court is saying that you committed war crimes, dude. But the only reason you're not receiving those repercussions is because you have the shadow hand that is the United States. Yeah, uh, Israel's own numbers say that they the, the militants killed slightly over 1,200 people, which means it's probably right around 1,200 or right below 1,200 is probably what it is. Um, and took 253 people in hostage, essentially. Since the campaign had began... It's, they've killed more than 39,000 people, mostly most of them being civilians. So they've killed, what? Like three times? 30, well, it's 1,200 to 39,000. So what is that? Yeah, fucking. It's a little over like three times that. So. And they've basically, the 2.3 million people that live there are basically displaced. Mm-hmm. So that's another that's and that's that's not even counting people that have been killed by just military munitions. That's that's all that number is. That's not the people who have starved or the yeah, people who famine. have died from famine or or fucking disease or they tested some fucking thing there the other day and found polio in the goddamn sewage shit because uh, they don't got no medicine, they don't got nothing. Now shit's spreading wild. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, well they're vaccinating the fucking Israeli soldiers so they don't get it. Oh cool, so they can go kill more fucking assholes. Yeah, great. <laughs> Way to go. Um Back to the speech. So back to the speech. Um, <clears throat> he goes on to say that the International Criminal Court has shamefully accused Israel of deliberately starving the people of Gaza. This is utter, complete nonsense. It's a complete fabrication. Israel has enabled more than 40,000 aid trucks to enter Gaza. That's half a million tons of food. That's more than 3,000 calories for every man, woman, and child in Gaza. Well, you guys have been there nine fucking months, and you've let 3,000 calories per person go into the country. That's 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 like maybe uh, two days' worth of food for fucking somebody. And, okay, well, wow, that's all you've let in? Sounds like you're starving them to me. I don't know. They don't have access to enough food to survive. Yeah, I mean, they. Then plus they can't fight back. They're, they're giving them enough sustenance to... To stay yeah. alive, but not fight back. So then he says, if there are Palestinians in Gaza who aren't getting enough food, it's not because Israel is blocking it. It's because Hamas is stealing it, which I'm sure maybe That's some of them are. That's probably true. It is. So much for that lie. But there's another. The ICC prosecutor accuses Israel of deliberately targeting civilians. What in God's green earth is he talking about? The IDF has dropped millions of flyers, sent millions of text messages, made hundreds of thousands of phone calls to get Palestinian civilians out of harm's way. But at the same time, Hamas does everything in its power to put Palestinian civilians in harm's way. They fire rockets from schools, from hospitals, from mosques. They even shoot their own people when they try to leave the war zone. A senior Hamas official, Fathi Hamad, boasted... Listen to this. He boasted that Palestinian women and children excel at being human shields. His words, excel at being human shields. What monstrous evil. For every for Israel, every civilian death is a tragedy. For, her, for Hamas, it's a strategy. They actually want Palestinian civilians to die so that Israel will be s- smeared in the international media and be pressured to end the war before it's won. Um... He goes on to say that it would enable Hamas to survive another day, and he said, uh, I will never allow that to happen. The vast majority of Americans have not fallen for this Hamas propaganda. They continue to support Israel, and I want to say thank you, America, and thank you, senators and House members who continue to support us, continue to support Israel, continue to support the truth, truth, and see through the lies. And, he, and th- this whole speech is being standing ovation, thunderous applause. And at one point, he tells them, don't clap anymore. And they fucking comply. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So then he continues, but as for the minority that may have fallen for Hamas's con job, I suggest you listen to Colonel John Spencer. He is head of urban warfare studies at West Point. He studied every major urban conflict, I was going to say in modern history. He corrected me, no, in history. Israel, he said, has implemented more precautions to prevent civilian harm than any military in history and beyond what international law requires. That that, that is a fucking straight, that is a lie and a half, man. That is not true. That's why, despite all the lies you've heard, the war in Gaza has one of the lowest ratios of combatants to non-combatant casualties in the history of urban warfare. 
And you want to know where it's lowest in Gaza? It's lowest in Rafah. Remember what so many people said. If Israel goes into Rafah, there'll be thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of civilians killed. Well, last week, I went to Rafah. I visited our troops as they finished fighting Hamas's remaining terrorist battalions. I asked the commander there, how many terrorists did you take out in Rafah? He gave me an exact number, 1,203. I asked him how many civilians were killed. He said, Prime Minister, practically none. With the exception of a single incident where shrapnel from a bomb hit a Hamas weapons depot and unintentionally killed two dozen people. But the answer is practically none. You're telling me 39,000 people that are mostly civilians have been killed. And you're going to say practically none have been fucking killed? Only 12, a dozen. Only 24, two dozen. A do- two dozen. And he says, he goes on to say, you want to know why? Because Israel got the civilians out of harm's way. Something people said we could never do, but we did it. You didn't get them out of the way. You just, Matter of fact. You, you leveled the place. It, you told them to go one direction and then leveled the direction they went. <laughs> like that is, you walked them into fucking destruction. So he goes on to basically say that, oh, we're here and we're going to be friends and we're going to do this. And he says, in the Middle East, Iran is virtually behind all the terrorism, all the turmoil, all the chaos, all the killing. And that should come as no surprise. When he founded the Islamic Republic, Ayatollah Khomeini pledged, we will export our revolution to the entire world. We will export the Islamic revolution to the world. Now ask yourself, which country ultimately stands in the way of Iran's maniacal plans to impose radical Islam on the world? And the answer is clear, it's America, the guardian of Western civilization and the world's greatest power. That's why Iran sees America as its greatest enemy. All all the way over here. Yeah. All all the way, we have nothing to do with it. 5,000 or 6,000 miles away, across an entire fucking ocean. What's Iran gonna do to us? Iran's not spreading its Islamic revolution to the continental, hell, it's not even going to spread it to the territories of the United States of America. It has nothing to do with us. If Iran wants to have the Middle East, fucking let them have it. Why are we going to fuck with this? And this, this, the whole point of this was because we needed... They want to make sure that the knee is being bent and continued to be bent to Israel. Our legislative branch, the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, bent the knee to fucking Netanyahu today or yesterday on Wednesday. Performatively, we don't know if that's actually how they feel. But by standing and applauding all the shit he's saying, you're performatively bending the knee, right? And Kamala Harris, who's the new presumptive nominee, right, has been lauded as being quote-unquote anti-Israel and and whatever. She came out today after having this meeting with, with him, with Netanyahu. Oh, yes. Israel's at war with Hamas, and Israel has the right to defend itself, and we will ensure that they can keep defending themselves. Okay, man, you're you're bending the knee. And We all know Trump is basically sucking Israel's dick, for lack of a better term, at every chance he gets. I love the Israelis. So many great Israelis. The Israelis are the best. They're the best Israelis on the planet. Okay, there's no other Israelis like them. They're so good at. They're so good at doing war. They make sure no civilians get killed. They only kill the bad guys, just like America. Everybody, give me a standing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically what Trump says all the time. So here we go again. Both sides are on the same page with this on the same fucking page with supporting a foreign country in a war that we shouldn't get involved in. And again... It's not really a war when we're not really... They're going to start... Because that's one of the things that the Israelis want, is they want to go into Yemen, they want to go into some of these other things, but they don't know... If Trump was president right now, they would have already done it because they know they'd have the support. I think this exploratory trip here was to see what the legislators and what the executive branch thinks of them, hey, uh, pushing forward now. Because again, you need votes. You need votes. And guess what? All the P5 
people who support Israel, they go out and vote. So do you want to be seen as anti-Israel and they'll go vote for the other person? Or do you want to maybe have a chance of getting the pro-Israel vote? That's what this trip was, in my opinion. Yeah, it's reading the room, reading the temperature, see where both candidates are at. If, if they have a alignment as far as the future of Israel itself goes, and I suppose the United States, but more so for the sake of Israel. Yeah, and then he goes on to talk about basically this is a war. Uh, Iran's war is not with Israel, but it's with America. That's that's again further. It's like it's it's like saying we're codependent on fucking Israel. Yeah, we we, we need to be involved with this war because Israel is involved with this war, or they're putting it on us. So like, man, we can give two shits about it. I mean, and we shouldn't. Iran doesn't have the fucking manpower or the technology to come here and say it to our face. They do not. Sure, maybe they can do a little bit of terrorism here and there. Maybe they'll blow up a couple power stations or attack an airport. Sure, maybe. But you're not going to take over the United States of America in a military action. It's not going to happen. Iran does not have the capability to do it. And to say that we need to do this because, oh, if you don't, they're going to they're gonna take you guys over. Everything's at stake. Yes. It's artificially raising the stakes. And so... It's like a... It's like an abusive relationship. <laughs> yeah. It's like convincing the other person that you can't function without the other person when it's like... That's the person projecting on the victim saying because it's like they have their own shortcomings but they're trying to convince the other person that they need them yeah that's what israel's doing to us is like they're basically they're the they're the wife beater yeah <laughs> they're trying to convince us that we need them yeah yeah exactly yeah and so he goes on to say at towards the end here working together i'm confident that our two nations will vanquish the tyrants and the terrorists who threaten us both. I think we are the tyrants at this point. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that that Israel is the, like, the, you're, we're the empire now. We have become the imperial fucking, like, we become the empire. Palpatine is fucking running the, running the show, and I'm not saying that the other guys are the rebellion, but we're just fucking everybody who's smaller than us. Yeah, it's, it's kind of what it's become. But it's the rhetoric. It's yeah. it's saying that there's a bigger enemy out there to <laughs> which there to, isn't to unite everybody else to say we're on the same page. But it, it is rather funny to say that there's tyrants out there. It's like, man, who the fuck? Who who isn't somebody that we can't fuck up? Like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he ends it with the, the typical. May God bless Israel, may God bless America, and may God bless the great alliance between Israel and America forever. <laughs> then, now, forever. Oh, man. So, uh, the, <laughs> Terrible, man. Christianities and Christianity and Judaism. Like this. The, di- the, yeah. the forced dyad. Right. And what's funny is if you look back, I mean, the Jews actually killed Jesus. So is, is that really... What, what, we're what you're, we're all supposed to be friends now, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, that, their do, the, only, the dogma doesn't make any sense now anymore. It doesn't make sense. I feel like the matrix is broken. I feel like the simulation is is now beginning to break down to the point where all this ridiculous shit is happening, and eventually the world's just going to explode. Like the simulation is going to crash. We're just going to be blue screen of death one day, and just <laughs> that that'll be it. That'll be the, the end of it. Yeah, that is a hell of a speech. <laughs> um, Completely unnecessary, and nobody asked for it. <laughs> yeah, after I watched it, I said, "Oh, thanks, Benji." No one asked. <laughs> yeah, no dude. one fucking asked. Cool story, bro. <laughs> yeah, cool story, bro. But don't tell it again. I don't. I don't want to hear it anymore. Anymore. <sighs> I just Try, trying to fucking let come into our fucking yeah. house while I'm eating a sandwich, dude, and you have the balls to lecture me about what is right and wrong in the world and what we should be doing. Shut the fuck up. Honestly, here's a hot take. I think if we nuked Israel, we might end all the problems in the Middle East. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm uh, just saying. I don't know. Yeah, nothing a ten ton meg- a megaton bomb can't fix. That's a true story. <laughs> I mean, you know, they they wouldn't see it coming. I mean, <laughs> you know. 
How do you like your mushroom clouds? <laughs> <laughs> Scrambled or over easy. <laughs> Ah, anyways, all right, cool. Well, that was that. That took us forty minutes, so good to go. Jesus, man. Ah, crazy. Fuck this. Fuck this person. Yeah, man. I, I fuck fuck that guy, man. I I do not. Most of his own country doesn't even fucking like him. It. He's. I think he's raised the stakes so far. It's like the same thing with Hitler, dude. Yeah. He pushed the envelope so much. The same thing with Putin. He's put the envelope so he pushed the envelope so far that he. Not, not knowing why he would probably raise the stakes so high, but he put himself in an impossible situation that if there's any backlash for the shit that he says or the things that he does, yeah, of course people are going to rebel and go after him. Yeah. But that's why he has a whole bunch of security and, yeah, yeah. and people are falling out of windows every five seconds. Like <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, I do think this is the... This is the Israeli version of you either die the hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. And I think they're going full circle. Like, I think this is, hey, man, yeah, you guys got genocided a few times. Now you're doing the genociding. Yeah. And I think that's what they're after. I think they want to genocide the whole Middle East. Yeah, I think they really wanted to get one over on somebody so that just yeah. to say, how does it feel, bitch? Like... <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what know. else to add. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. So, anyways. All right, cool. Well, remember, we're not anti-Semitic because we hate everyone the same. All right? So, just, just keep that in mind. All right? Uh, but if you are a, you know, Semite, I guess. <laughs> if, you're, if, if you are of, of Semite relations or if you're Jewish and you, you think we're fucking anti-Semitic, please tell me why in the comments. Please tell, please explain your position because I would love to know if you're just buying into the propaganda or not. And shit, maybe you have a perspective that I don't and that's how you, maybe you'll, maybe you'll show me, hey, okay, cool. I can see how that could be taken as anti-Semitic, even though I said a fucking thousand times this is not anti-Semitic, it's anti-Israeli government, but okay. Anyways, go to GameRageMagazine.com. You can see all of our shit, all of our podcasts. We have some that are controversial, some that are non-controversial, some that are denominational, and some that are non-denominational. I don't know why I said that. It sounded funny. It sounded funny in my head. Um, Instagram and TikTok, at Game Rage Magazine. Twitter slash X, at Game Rage Mag. All Gas, No Trash official for Adam to see his, uh, see him hate on music. <laughs> hate on all the shitty music that's out there. Anyways, all right, well, that'll do it for us. Catch you on the next one.